Whole question today, should sports gambling be made legal? Is that right, McLevin? Right, across the country, all 50 states. All right, let me start Can with I that. Can I answer the question? Yeah, Pete, go ahead. Absolutely. Take it out of the shadows. I agree with what Adam Silver said in the New York Times today, which is people are going to gamble, and why not make it legal? It's, a, it's, to me, a Trojan horse of an argument, or whatever my bad cliche is. It's just, it doesn't make any sense that everybody bets on football. It's illegal. And so then you create a kind of a dirty industry out of it. I just don't understand why that is. I don't understand why you think because people gamble that games are going to be fixed. I don't, I don't get that. Well, when you consider the amount of money that's gambled illegally, and if you do do it in a monitored way, I'm fine with that. I have yeah. no problem. And I think a lot of these leagues are just saying, we want our piece of this. Yeah. That, that once we figure out how we get our money, then we'll be fine. I mean, the gambling lines, the betting lines are in every newspaper in America. Right. So it's not like the NFL goes, stop putting that in there. Uh, I don't even know if they've even tried to do something like that. Hey, stop putting our, we have college gambling lines in there too. So I'm just trying to figure out everybody's motivation here. How we make money. It's like marijuana. I think the there are people in the NFL who truly believe, and there may be some good cause in the past to make them believe this, that gambling would lead to, they fear anyway, that gambling would lead to a fixed game or more than one fixed game. So, you know, I, I they may be justified in thinking that, but to me that's 1950s logic when players made 10 cents a game, you know, relatively speaking. But I think that it's, it's more out in the open. So maybe the less, less of a possibility you'd have a fixed game. If no it, question. If everybody had eyes on it. Yeah, I agree totally, you know, to create, to make it a public event and to make it, you're right, make, put it out in the public so that people wouldn't have to uh, try to hide it all the time. There have been a lot of different conversations that we've had on the show the last couple of days. One was yesterday where we were looking at Des Bryant's contract situation here. And McLovin brought up, if you're starting a, a team right now with any of these wide receivers, Calvin Johnson, whoever it might be, Des Bryant, uh, A.J. Green, who would you start your team with? I wouldn't start it with, De with Des Bryant, and it doesn't have anything to do with his ability. It's just that the guy scares me a little bit off the field. I don't think he's going to blow up necessarily. But I'd probably prefer a guy who doesn't have any baggage in his past if I'm going to pay him a jillion dollars. Um, but, but in general, I think that, you know, it's always dangerous to pay a wide receiver gigantic money because of the injury factor. And the fact that if you look at the draft this year, look at how many really good wide receivers came out in this draft. In my opinion, somebody asked me this week, who's your offensive rookie of the year? I said, John Brown. He's the 91st pick in the draft. The Arizona Cardinals got John Brown by trading from 20 to 27, picking the safety they wanted, and they would have taken it 20, Deion Buchanan, and then getting a bonus pick out of it, paying Deion Buchanan less and getting John Brown out of it. And so I think college football is – producing so many good wide receivers now that I wouldn't rush to pay any, even the really great ones in the NFL. I'm not rushing to pay them 10, 12, 14 million bucks. Talking to Peter King, the MMQB.com is uh, the website joining us here in the uh, New York city man cave. Uh, DeMarco Murray in a contract year. Um, you know, we see these running backs when you get up to 380, 390, 400 carries, what that means for the rest of your career, would you right. would you sign up to Marco Murray long term? I'd want to sign to Marco Murray, but I'm not going to pay him what he wants to make. And I think the ro the road is littered with running backs who you know just get too many miles on them and aren't great anymore. And you know you look at the last what's the last huge running back contract, really huge running back contract, you know where it just went totally bust. And it reminds me of Demarco Murray, and that's Sean Alexander with the Seahawks. Sean Alexander never played well after he got that money. And it doesn't have to do with the diminution of desire. It has to do with the tread taken off the tires, in my opinion. I think that Andrew Brandt wrote on our site on the MMQB how winning a rushing title would probably be bad for DeMarco Murray in trying to get his contract because then 
his ex- expectations are going to be up here. And the Cowboys, the reality of what the Cowboys want are going to want to pay, I'm sure is going to be in the six or seven million dollar range. He's not going to want that. Some of the matchups this weekend, this is one of the few weekends we've had in the NFL where you've had better matchups than college football. I mean, you have Mississippi State, Alabama, and Florida State, Miami. Those are big. Ohio State, Minnesota. But looking at Seahawks, Chiefs is sneaky great. Bengals, Saints, Eagles, uh, Packers, Lions, Cards, and then our Sunday night game, the Colts and the Patriots. Where do you want to start? Well, what about Arizona, Detroit? Yeah, how, about, <laughs> how about Arizona, Detroit with a combined 15 and three? And that's going to, I think it's going to like 15% of the country. How incredible is that? Are you in on both of these teams? Uh, so, well, by sold, you mean, do I think both of them are going to make the playoffs and maybe win a playoff game? Sure. But I mean, there's just too many good teams now and there's too much time left to go. A week ago, we thought the Steelers were going to win the Super Bowl 100 to nothing. And now <clears throat> we don't know if they're even going to make the playoffs. If the playoffs started today, <laughs> the Steelers wouldn't be in. The only team in that division that would be in would be Cleveland. I mean, how great is that? Um, yeah, it's funny. I talked to Joe Hayden yesterday and uh, the Browns corner, and he said, I cannot, this is true, I can't go to my grocery store anymore because people just love us too much. You know, and he said it's a good problem to have, yes. but he said I just can't go anymore. I, you know, this is the first weekend, week eleven or later in NFL history, where there's four games featuring teams this featuring games this good, or four uh, games featuring teams this good. And um, I, I agree with you. I think the Kansas City Seattle game is going to be sneaky fun, uh, but I think the best game of the weekend is Indianapolis New England, just because. You know, the Colts are number one in everything on offense, and yet the Patriots over the last five weeks are averaging 40 points a game. So I just think, and the Patriots, in the only two times he's, Brady's ever met luck, they've just myrtleized Indianapolis. So it's going to be, I think that's really going to be fun. Is that a word? No, it's not. I oh, made okay. it up right now. <laughs> no, I think actually that used to be on Wimpy and Popeye. I will myrtleize you. Uh, do you want to stay for McLevin's against the grain and his quiz that he's going to have about backup quarterbacks? I would love to do it, except I'll be exposed, but I'm happy to be exposed on the Dan well, Patrick but show. Do you, McLevin? There's no real NFL facts in here. Don't worry. This will not expose you. Uh, Any ooh. more than I've already been exposed <laughs> in this segment? <laughs> <laughs> Joe Madden, what a signing, huh? Yeah, but do you think there's any tampering involved in that, Peter? I have no clue. But, I okay, mean, explain have... this to me. It's like when, when free agency hits at midnight in the NFL and a guy signs at 12.01. Well, obviously there's tampering then, but there's public tampering at that time because you know at the end of a football season, agents are going to be talking to guys. I remember a story. I'm trying to remember who it was. It was Matt Chatham maybe or somebody else. Some some free agent happened to be in the. This is when the Jets still still trained on Long Island. Some free agent happened to be staying in the Long Island Marriott, right next door to the <laughs> Jets complex, on the Friday night that free agency was going to start at midnight. Just a coincidence. Just so happened that somebody it, and I forget if it was Chad, but it was somebody who ended up signing that day with the Jets. What about Richie Incognito? Went to Denver. And talk to them. I don't know if he worked out, but uh, is he still toxic that you're not going to bring him in? Big All I can wise. say is he must be because he's good enough to help a lot of teams. And I think my gut feeling is he's going to sign with Denver at some point because I think that, you know, they are all in for this year. And even if Richie Incognito only gives them five games, they're the five important games, that'll be important to them. And I, I can't see a contender with an offensive line need not signing this guy. He's going to be a church mouse. He's not going to create any problems. He understands, we were talking about it in the break, that he's got two strikes on him and Mariano Rivera is pitching, and he's got one chance. That's it, just one chance, and he knows that. So I think he's not going to screw it up. When Why is the NFL not decided on Adrian Peterson? This is such a difficult case, in my opinion. It isn't that difficult to me because – but to the NFL, I think it is because they know if they let them play, if they bring them back, let's say they suspend them a week or two without pay and then let them play, let's say, the last four games of the year, that you're going to have people screaming, what is this new personal conduct policy you're talking about? 
this guy whipped his son until he was bleeding and you're letting him play football again? Why? But to me, the NFL has always given local jurisprudence, whatever the court decides in a local case, that's been huge to the NFL. And so this guy pled guilty to a misdemeanor charge, okay, of uh, whatever it was, of assault or child abuse, whatever it was. But it's a misdemeanor charge. It's not a felony. Yeah. And he has made his peace with the, uh, uh, you know, with the courts in Texas. So now, to me, the NFL, I think a fair punishment, I wrote it today, was I think a fair punishment would be one or two games without pay. And just think of this. One game without pay is $691,000. So that's a pretty big uh, a pretty big punishment, in my opinion. But And he's already missed uh, eight games. So uh, if I were the NFL, I would give him one or two games, take the mountain of crap from people who don't think he should ever play again, and just move on with it. Best guess where Adrian Peterson's playing next year. Um, I said Dallas a few weeks ago, uh, but now after this settlement in the court in Texas, I tend to think it'll probably still be with Minnesota. Well, you could say to DeMarco Murray's rep, uh, you could play Adrian Peterson of off. Of course you could. I've been thinking DeMarco of that Murray. all I've been thinking of that all along. Um, and I don't think that would be the worst decision in the world. I mean, Adrian Peterson has at least two or three, in my opinion, top years left. He's in remarkable condition. Plus, this year's a mulligan. So he doesn't have the wear and tear for this year. So I I think Jerry Jones would be smart if he played one guy against another if the Vikings released Peterson.